Kitten alert. Yep, there's a kitten. I'm showing the kitten because I'm going to talk about Critical Role. I figured I should calm you all down with the kitten first. Hello and welcome. It's Saturday. I know I normally don't post on Saturdays unless there's something really interesting happening or I'm just bored. But uh, the second part of the Critical Role cliffhanger has come and gone and we have the fallout from the massive character death plot line. And... Um, I know I got in a lot of trouble for talking about it. People do not understand my less than positive view on Critical Role. So let me just say before going forward, you know, I would say 80% of Critical Role fans are just like any other fans. You know, like my fandom of Power Rangers or somebody who likes Walking Dead or somebody who likes uh, Day of the Restless or somebody who likes uh, Cardassians. You know, you love a show. You're invested in the show. You're invested in the characters. Something happens. You get upset about it, and then you move on. Like the people who got upset when Daryl died in Walking Dead. Spoilers. You know, 90% of them are like, oh, no, Daryl died. I'm upset, but I'm going to move on with life. But then you got the, 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 the 10%. And unfortunately, because of the way the interweb works, the 10% is the one we hear about the most, the attention-seeking um, negative toxic fan base. Now, sadly, most of my interaction with Critical Role fans has been with that 10%. So I know I come off with a very much of a chip sh on my shoulder about Critical Role and Critical Role fans. Uh, but more often than not, I find myself siding with the cast and siding with Mercer and just going, God, I feel bad for this guy. And then people get upset at me uh, and which sort of reinforces the whole my negative experience with Critical Role fans. Uh, so I feel like no matter what I say about Critical Role, I'm going to get attacked. I'm trying to not be as negative as I used to be. I have had very nice, positive encounters with Critical Role fans, but I would say a large chunk of my encounters have been not... God, what is this camera? Uh, not pleasant. Anyways, spoilers, if you haven't seen the uh, follow-up, is this Mercer's first cliffhanger? I don't know. Uh, with the amount of attention it is, I would think it's his first, but I don't know. I feel like he's had a cliffhangers before. Maybe there wasn't as much writing on the previous cliffhangers, or I've just, you know, it feels like this isn't his first. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know. Uh, correct me, but um, if this was the first cliffhanger. But as you know, we ended the last episode of the campaign with two members dead, one really damn close to death, and the rest scattered to the winds because of various shenanigans and explosions and badness. So, spoilers, we have the results uh, of the second episode of the two-parter. Uh, so, yes, it landed on the cliff cliffhanger. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. So they were fighting this dude uh, named... Oh, God, Mercer and his names, dude. Orthran Thrall. And I guess Orthran Thrall won initiative <laughs> or something because, wow, we had a lot of people death. Um, so uh, we then we had a flashback episode where uh, the members of the parties were trapped in uh, their memories because of Imogen's powers and there was a crater and destruction. I don't know what any of this means. Uh, Orm and Fern are dead and Loden was critically wounded. Uh, they were still in uh, initiative when Marisha Way's character Lodrin came up. She was one death save away from dying and she rolled a natural one. So now they're down to three dead members. Uh, Sam Regal's robot character, though, had a single third level spell and he cast Revivify, which uh, is, you know, a poor man's resurrection. Um, and then they re Revivify Fern, who succeeded in the, her wisdom check, needed to bring her back to life with Fern on her now standing. Who do they revivify next? Because Fern had um, only one revivify less. I guess in Mercer 5e, if you die, you don't lose your spells. I always thought if you died and come back, you know, you lost your spells. But I guess you don't. Maybe that's just the way we always played. 
So they were like, who do we resurrect? Um, Orem or Loinda? So they, they did a coin flip? Wow. That's sort of a... Uh, um... I don't know. I would. Which one has the better chance of getting you out of the situation and getting you to the point where you can resurrect the other one? But they flipped a coin. Orem got resurrect, revivified, and uh, Lorinda is left dead. At which point, Marisha Ray had to leave the table due to the death of her character. And I guess Mercer's running the whole. If your character dies, you leave the game for now. I don't know if she'll be back next week or not, um, but for the rest of that episode, Marissa was gone. I don't know if she was upset or not. There's not no mention of this. I don't know how everybody else was upset or not. I'm assuming, you know, because it's critical role and because of the investment, there was probably some oohs and ahs and some laughter and some, oh, I'm sorry, and some quiet, and maybe they took a break. I don't know. Uh, I'd have to, I'm waiting for more information, but it just sounds like, you know, she was asked to leave the table because her character was dead and maybe this is to uh, facilitate the fact that if and when they bring her character back she would have no idea what has happened uh or um whatever but of course it leaves the the uh uh question uh marissa ray's character is a hollow one anyone I, is that a made-up race that mercer made up or is that a 5e race i'm not aware of uh I'm behind on what is player character races. Uh, I've only, I, if you remember last year, I did a thing where we were trying to go through all the character races you could play. And we only got like into two books before I was like, there's just too many, but because she's a hollow one, she doesn't have a soul. Was she a construct or no, she was a living dead. That's right. She was a living dead kind of thing. So she was a free willed undead, I guess, which would be, uh, make it unable for them to technically resurrect her um, because resurrection states you have to have a soul. I mean, how do you, if an undead character dies, how do you bring them back? I guess. And if they would, if they come back, are they now a still an undead character or do they become now a living character? Like if I cast resurrection on a zombie does the zombie come back as a zombie or does the zombie come back as the person it was before they became a zombie? I would assume since resurrection is a way higher spell than revivify, there's more um, leeway. And if you're getting into the resurrection level, you're also getting into the place where the cler clerics can cast shit like reincarnate, resurrection, uh, miracle, uh, stuff like that. So there's probably ways to bring her back. Uh, and I think it, I'm calling it now. I'm going to probably be wrong, but if I'm right, this is what it feels like. They find a way to bring her back, but she comes back as a living being, which she has a soul and maybe it's her soul or maybe it's somebody else's soul. But when she comes back, it's going to be not a hollow one through the magic of resurrection. Uh, um, Um, so yeah, and the other stuff, spoilers, I don't know, uh, like, did you know that Lorinda was carrying the soul of the campaign one baddie, Delia Briarwood, who showed up in the Vox Machina cartoon? So yeah, there's a lot of stuff hanging on the, uh, precipice there. Uh, Marissa is out. I don't know if she's going to show up again Thursday with a different character or if that spot's going to be filled with someone else. Um, I don't know what the current politics of the table are. It's hard to do these reviews since I don't watch the show in entirety. But I know it's important. And I know a lot of people are going to be upset and, you know, talk smack and whatever, which is why I do these. So if you're thinking of being upset over the episode, don't please don't. If you're thinking about hurting yourself or hurting someone else, because of the way the episode played out, please don't. Please talk to somebody. If you think, oh, you're now justified to send death threats to Mercer or whoever, please, please don't. Please, please talk to somebody. Remember, it's a show. At the end of the day, it's a show. Um, anything that happens in the show doesn't really have any effect on real life. It's a game. Mercer, I think, is capable enough to tell the story. 
I'm sure Marissa will be back in some form or not. Who knows? I mean, maybe she's like, okay, you know, this is a good chance for me to take a break and work on some other projects since I'm not going to have a character in the show in a while. You know, maybe I want to redecorate the house. Maybe I want to get pregnant. Maybe I want to go on a trip. Maybe I've got a voice acting job I on the uh, back burner I can work on now because I'm not in the game. Maybe somebody else will come in. Maybe not. Maybe she'll show up and playing a new character for a bit. Uh, or, you know, go off and do some project. I would think the reason why she's asked to leave the table is so she has no idea what happened while she was dead. So that when she comes back, she'll be like, what happened? How much time has been gone? Why does C-3PO have a red arm? Why did they never explain why C-3PO had a red arm? Um... All right, I'm just tossing this one out there, too. If and when they find a way to bring this character back, she's going to come back with a soul. It might not be her soul. It might be Delia Brightward's soul. Or it might be a completely different soul. But I believe that she will no longer be a horrible one. She'll be something else. Because that's what I would do. And I, I don't know. Anyways, those are the aftermath of this uh, Matt Mercer's cliffhanger critical role. Uh, 90% of the dead party is back, only one remaining dead. Now the party has to deal with the aftermath of all the uh, destruction and chaos and carnage that uh, this guy started because they attacked him when they weren't prepared. And we've got other things going on, like mutant moons and radiation and ghosts and stuff. Is this going to be the end of Critical Role? Uh, will there be a campaign for? Probably. Hopefully they'll take a break, but I don't know probably be a campaign for is this a lead up to mercer making his own role-playing game god i hope so uh cut your ties with D, mercer make your own game it's in your best interest um at least in my humble opinion it is uh so yeah spoilers um and again if you're feeling emotionally upset because of the events in the game and you're thinking about hurting yourself or hurting someone else or sending death threats to mercer or you know calling me a jackass understand again it's just it's just a show and if you're really feeling this way there are better ways to channel that energy than self-harm or harming someone else or talking about harming somebody else there is you know resources out there that can uh, help you and deal with the issues till next time i'm the og gm talking about my favorite topic critical role if you appreciate me talking about critical role let me know if you think i should shut up and never talk about critical role ever again let me know but you know i talked about it last week so i kind of had to talk about it this week even though i also know it'll probably get me in trouble and again sorry but i did say spoilers at the start um yeah well congratulations matt mercer for a successful completion of your cliffhanger and leaving everybody with a, oh my god, what's going to happen to Marissa Ray's character? But I'm pretty sure Marissa will be fine, and we probably haven't seen the last of the character. Anyways, support me, subscribe, like, share, let me know your opinions. Uh, what would you do? How do you handle death in your game? That's probably a topic that's going to come up because of this episode, so it's probably something I'm going to have to talk about before the week's over. Till next time, have a great weekend, and I will talk to you later. Bye, my merch.